their fundamental original uh, error stems from. And this, this idea that there are no differences or that, that there are minimal differences, it, it doesn't conform to reality, which is that we live in a meritocracy. If, you, if your skills are higher than somebody else's, if you're better at a certain task, you should be given the opportunity over them. That's not what they want. They want the oppression Olympics where, you know, gender or race or whatever issue is held to a higher standard than actual skill and talent, which of course right. is is disastrous for a society that's trying to develop and improve because you want the cream to rise to the top. You want the best people in the best positions, correct? Yes, and, and I would say that that particular mindset actually comes from the tabula rasa uh, premise of the human mind, right? The idea that we are all born with empty minds without any biological innate imperatives and that what makes us who we become is strictly our environment, strictly socialization strictly culture. And so uh, to recognize that there are starting points, that there are biological imperatives that make men and women on some issues fundamentally different from one another violates this tabula rasa premise, right? I mean, it could be taken to such ludicrous heights that the idea, for example, that Lionel Messi might have a innate talent that he started off with. In other words, Lionel Messi, it didn't matter what environment he had, would always end up being a greater soccer player than Paul Joseph Watson. <laughs> they would reject that. They would say that there is a unique confluence of environmental factors that created Lionel Messi, but there is nothing inherent in his starting point that would have made Lionel Messi any better than Paul Joseph Watson. And it, so again, it comes from the idea uh, th that we are we all have equal potentiality we all could be anything, and that's simply not true. We'll be back with Gad Saad after the break. We're going to talk about social media and mob outrage, along with a raft of other issues. Again, tonight, InfoWars Nightly News are going to be covering the Democratic debates, live coverage with Leanne McAdoo and David Knight. InfoWars.com for all the breaking news. Stay tuned. We're going to be coming back with Gad Saad. Keep it locked in. We're back live on the Alex Jones Show with me, your host, Paul Joseph Watson. Before we go back to Gad Sad, just want to mention InfoWarsStore.com. Again, we've got 20% off on B12, Knockout, Liver Cleanse, all the other great products. And of course, it drives this broadcast. It helps our expansion. InfoWarsStore.com. We've got the Hillary for Prison T-shirts, numerous different discounts. Brain Force, of course, Knockout, a number of great supplements. Advanced Liver Cleanse Pack, excellent third-party reviews there. You can go and check out all these different products. Infowarsstore.com. We're talking to Professor Gad Sad, whose YouTube channel is youtube.com forward slash Gad Sad. Be sure to check out his excellent videos, which I discovered just recently. Feminism, we touched upon it before the break in terms of, you know, how it's fundamentally unscientific to not recognize the basic differences between men and women, which is what radical feminism intends to do, because it's all about a power grab. It's not about true equality. They don't recognize true equality. They only want to exploit this to create division so they can come in and fill the vacuum and basically play, you know, the uh, the oppression Olympics where one gender is raised above another and society isn't based on meritocracy, which it should be, to create and build a successful society with both men and women contributing in terms of what they're good at. But let's move on to, you know, just the, this, the word itself, the modern incarnation of feminism, and I've made numerous videos about this, has become so unpopular that it's basically turned feminism into a dirty word. We've got polls now with less than 25% of American women identifying as feminists. And I think even the, that... the more recent polls show that it's less than that. So Gad Sad. Why does the establishment media, again, mainly through the entertainment industry, still insist on promoting and venerating what is obviously a discredited and in many ways harmful belief system? Why do they inst insist on pushing this radical feminism bent when less and less people are resonating with it? I'm guessing because they, in a sense, exist within their echo chamber where they don't necessarily receive feedback uh, that the message is not resonating, right? Because the people that they get together with to 
sip their fancy lattes are in full agreement with their positions. This is kind of like when a professor overestimates his ability in terms of how well he'll do in his teaching at the end of the semester. Why does he, he or she overestimate it? It's because he's only receiving feedback from students who come up to him to say, hey, professor, loved your, loved your term, right? But the people who thought that he was really poor didn't take the time to come up to him and say, hey, professor, I really thought you sucked and that this was the worst class. And therefore, he walks into the teaching evaluation thinking that he is actually going to perform better than he truly will perform. And the same thing is happening with traditional media, right? They're, they're not necessarily uh, in touch with the general landscape and the mood of the general populace. And, and I think whether it be your media outlet or other independent media outlets, I think they are correcting for that problem because they're offering voices uh, to folks who otherwise would have never gotten a foot in the door uh, if it were the traditional media that were still, uh, you know, uh, monopolizing all the voices. So thank you for your show and for other people like you. Well, I appreciate it. And that's exactly what it is. It's an echo chamber. And feminists themselves, they refuse to be challenged. That's why they never, you know, temper or adjust these radical belief systems. They've got these, these block lists on Twitter. They refuse to even engage in any kind of conversation, any debate. You know, you've got trigger warnings, safe spaces. They hate free speech. They hate debate. We're going to talk more about it after the break. With Gad Sad, this is The Alex Jones Show live, Infowars.com. Stay tuned. Final hour of The Alex Jones Show with me, your host, Paul Joseph Watson. We're going to go to your calls after our guest gets off here at the bottom of the hour. But we're talking to Gad Sad, who is a behavioral scientist about feminism, about social justice warriors, about the threat to free speech. And now I want to switch to social media and mob outrage, which, of course, is becoming an increasingly potent force. Social media outrage, basically people being publicly shamed, fired from their jobs. We saw it a few weeks ago with the lawyer who had the temerity to call a female's you know, LinkedIn picture stunning, God forbid. He was fired, he was publicly shamed. And again, in some cases, people being physically hounded for their politically incorrect free speech. But there's something of a backlash brewing against this phenomenon. And Gad Saad, would you agree that, you know, as I mentioned earlier, the biggest threat to free speech is now not necessarily the state. It's these hate mobs on Twitter, on Facebook, who have basically accu accumulated this power simply from being perpetually offended. They amplify each other's offense, even though it's completely baseless in most cases, now they've accumulated this power of public shaming, which in many cases is more, pow is more powerful than the state when they try to crush free speech via direct censorship. Absolutely. Look, let me give you a few personal anecdotes. Uh, I often ask some of my colleagues who should be at the forefront of engaging the public, right? I mean, as, as, as academics and as scientists, I mean, yes, yeah, sure, we could work within our uh, areas of expertise, but some of us have, uh, you know, opinions to share about all sorts of issues. We should uh, be uh, drawing a bridge to the public at large. Yet many of them will get back to me and say, gee, you know, I, I, I sometimes look at your uh, public platform and I, and I wish I could do what you could do. I say, well, why don't you? And oftentimes, not always, but oftentimes the answer that I get back is, frankly, I'm afraid. I'm afraid because of some of the dynamics that you mentioned at the start of your question, right? I mean, I don't want to expose myself to uh, these ravenous mobs. I don't want to perhaps say something once that might be misconstrued. I'll, I'll give you an example. A colleague of mine once tweeted, uh, a, a, he was trying to make a quip, okay? Maybe it was a, a silly one, but he said something to the effect, and I'm, I'm going to paraphrase, you know, overweight people, if you don't have the willpower to resist the next uh, pasta dish, then, uh, you know, maybe you won't have the ability to finish your dissertations. It's obnoxious. It's annoying. It's probably ill-advised. But he was trying to be witty, and it backfired. Now, it backfired so powerfully. And this is a, a very, very respected, lovely, gentle uh, guy uh, it's so backfired that people were calling for him to lose his tenured position. Now, this is a guy who's lived his life very honorably. He's a very res well-respected scientist. I know him personally. I know his character. You know, he, 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 he tried his luck at a joke, 
that was probably idiotic and it failed. Now to imagine that people could be so diabolically nasty that that mistake that he made should end his career and that they would call for that is simply breathtaking. And so in most cases, people don't want to join the discussion because they're afraid of the repercussions. And hence we have self self censorship again. And again, you mentioned the fat shaming angle there. I've made videos about that. There was actually a TV show recently, like a sitcom. And one of the skits, which was like a promotional thing for the 30 minute TV show, was basically a fat guy, very fat guy, obese, sat in a doctor's office saying, you know, doctor, what's wrong with me? And the doctor says, well, you're fat. That's what's wrong with you. They called for the show to be banned. Yes. That's that's the level it's got to where humor and Jerry Seinfeld, a bunch of other people have complained about this, where humor is now, you know, not to be tolerated whatsoever. We're going to come back with Gad Sad after the break. We're going to talk about social media and mob outrage. This is the Alex Jones Show Live, Infowars.com. Stay right there. It's Paul Joseph Watson back live with the Alex Jones Show. We've got Gad Sad on the line for another 20, 25 minutes or so. Top story on Infowars.com. This is also linked on the Drudge Report. Obama, American suspicion of government is paralyzing. In a somewhat under the radar interview, the president made some candid comments that reveal more than usual regarding his end of office agenda. Noting that he finds Americans' common skepticism of government paralyzing. Which is interesting given our topic of conversation, political correctness, which of course was started by the Frankfurt School. That's how it was imported into America. It was embraced by the Soviets. It was embraced by Maoist China, who of course defined a politically incorrect opinion as one that disagreed with the state. Again, illustrating the fact that this is a top-down tool of censorship and oppression. This isn't a grassroots bottom-up movement for people to be kinder to each other. It's nothing to do with that. This is a threat to free speech. It's a threat to open debate. It's infected our universities, and it needs to be addressed. And there is a backlash against it. In fact, if you read John Ronson's book, So You've Been Publicly Shamed, he kind of underscores the point that you don't apologize to these people. That's the only way you win. That's the only way you come out on top. It's the only way you don't get fired from your job, publicly shamed, by not apologizing, by not backing down, because these outrage mobs are paper tigers. When you actually challenge them and stand up to them, they disappear, they completely evaporate. But we're talking to Gad Sad about this, and it's youtube.com slash Gad Sad, or he's on Twitter at Gad Sad again, G A D S A A D. You can find out more of his content there. But again, social media. A lot of this social justice warrior mob outrage is driven by what's become to be known as virtue signaling. And that means basically hashtag activism and people espousing politically correct beliefs simply to make themselves look good, simply to earn social brownie points with the rest of their progressive friends whether they even believe in those opinions or not, or whether they're just being lazy. You know, for example, sharing the Coney 2012 video before even watching it or knowing what it was about. So Gad Sad, from a behavioral and psychological perspective, why is virtue signaling such a compelling temptation for people to engage in? Why has it become so pervasive? Well, so it's a great question because I actually discuss this in several of my books. So let's, before I address that specific question, let's talk about, for example, conspicuous consumption, right? The idea, for example, that, you know, why is it that 99% of Ferrari owners tend to be men? Well, it's because it's a form of peacocking, right? In the same way that the peacock uses his tail to send certain signals about his phenotypic quality, right? How good his genes are, because they are honest signals of his fitness, Humans engage in all sorts of signaling, men and women, but contrary to what feminists tell us, men and women use different sex-specific signals to typically impress one another. Well, in the case of virtue signaling, I am signaling not necessarily my wealth or my beauty, but I'm signaling certain attributes that I think that my social network is going to find desirable. And so in the case of hashtag uh, activism, I'm basically demonstrating that I care about the world, that I care about something beyond myself. I'm not narcissistic. But of course, it's hypocritical because the same people who 
do the hashtag stuff 